<laughs> All right, so we're out here with Jason. We're making some test bricks out of our clay and sand. So he's got a, um, a board here that he's putting bricks on. He's wrote three to one, four to one, two to one, and that's sand to clay. So right now it's all one clay and then higher part sand. He's working on a one to one, which is way too sticky. Yeah. Um, but this is something that for cobbing, this is what you want to do because generally you don't know the uh, properties of what you've pulled out of the ground because generally the clay you're going to use is out of the ground. Uh, we ended up buying 60 bags of Lincoln 60 fire clay. Um, got a pretty decent price on it and it ended up being cheaper than us getting two yards of clay as the closest we could find it. So we, we'd have to buy it from the gentleman who, who had it on his property and then the, getting it excavated and trucked here. Yeah, very um, rare in our area. Cost a, a bit of money. So uh, what we ended up doing is finding Lincoln 60 fire clay which is uh, an ideal clay it's pure clay it's ideal and it's a very good clay to use for cob it was not the plan at all i was kind of scrambling to find clay for this project and that happened so this is not something that would this is out of the norm and we only did it because it ended up being easier and cheaper uh, although given time if you have time for a job even if you're in a situation like this where out here in uh, hamilton montana there's not a lot of clay around but if you have time to prepare for this job, you know, if you're planning on it for a year or two, you can talk with excavating companies, people that dig houses and basements, and every now and then they'll find clay, or you could even, we could have gone as far as Missoula, and you could even possibly get it dropped off for free or pay a minimal charge for them to bring it to you. So there's a lot of options of going cheaper, and especially if you can find it on your own property. Uh, but when you're, with this race, with this mix, where we're using Lincoln 60, all pure clay, and a really nice sand in various sizes. <laughs> it's a good sand for cob. Uh, this will probably be right around the um, two to one to three to one um, worth uh, one part clay, two parts sand, or one part clay, three parts sand, somewhere in that range. And uh, But we're going through the motions of testing it even down to one to one to see what it feels like. And we're going to do a three to two and a four to three. And this is what you would do with your found clay to figure out what ratio you need with your sand. Because uh, a lot of found clay is going to have sand in it, it's going to have silt in it. So you, you'll need more of it, but you'll need less sand. So, um, for instance, we ordered one yard of clay. But if we got the clay that the gentleman had nearby, we would have had to get two yards because it already has sand and s some silt in it. Um, so, what else were we gonna say? I was gonna say something else. Oh, and then when these bricks dry, um, you can kind of scrape at them to see how crumbly they are, but then you drop them from shoulder height, and the one that doesn't break, that you start sandier, or you, uh, and then the one that doesn't break is the one you use. So, let's see the ratio between three to one and four, two to one, two to one and three to one. I don't have a ratio between there. What would that be? That'd be a three, three quarters, one quarter, and two thirds, one third. Oh, what what would be the step between that? Yeah. So you yeah. go. Um, well, it'd be like two and a half to one, which would be five to two. Yeah, that'd be six. No, f yeah. Oh, five to, to two, two, that's seven. Yeah, because it'd be two and a half to one, so that'd be five to two, which is out of seven. So yeah, let's try a five to two. I think that... The... Um, the four to three, I don't even think we need to mess with. Don't worry about that one. Because that's so close to 50-50, it doesn't matter. So, so we've got the first four. And then I think the one that we're probably, because we're probably looking at I'd say two to one, three to one. And in between those yeah, is the five to two. So we'll get one in between that range. And the three to two just for shits and giggles. So, 
and five to two, I'd have to do the math, but uh, it's five divided by seven and two divided by seven. Somewhere between 67 and 75 percent clear. Our sand. Yeah, nice. All right. Back at it. What's Green up to? You're running around with the vodka? Look at that. Hitting it early. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh It's your synergy water. It's a special well it's that was the kombucha. Yeah. Well it's it's a special it's still water. embodied in the glass. It's true. It says synergy. It does. There's supposed to be a deal where um, you know, if you write a word like that on the bottle you put your glass and your water in, it makes a difference to the water. Yeah. Uh that was uh, I can't remember the doctor's name now. Yeah. Japanese guy. Yep. The secret power of water, the yep. hidden messages of water, something like that. There's a bunch of different people that there's just all kinds of weird angles with water. Have you seen, have you read that book? Not that one. And there's, there's the guy who did all the studies with looking at water in a microscope after it's been either microwaved or boiled or yeah, yeah. this or that or the other and you know how it looks all different. Yep. Yeah, I read a couple of the books by the, uh, the doctor from Japan um, and he had pictures of where they would label the water and then freeze mm -hmm. it in the, the shape of the crystals. Yeah. And the crystals were like beautiful mm -hmm. when they were positive, yeah. life giving words. And then when they were negative, you know, uh, invalidating words, they were, they were misshapen. They were deformed. It was really fascinating. The power of our words, yep. right? Yep. Right. That's enough video of talking. Now I get back to working. Grippy gloves. There they are. Beautiful. And let's get a screw on our drill. I can't believe these are magnetic stainless. It's so awesome. I'm so used to having to hold it at a slight up angle and not make any sudden movements. And then it still falls on you if you tilt it down too much. Figured I can double check the fit of that because that's still going to be a bit up in the air and about have to reshape it once it's hanging. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I think that tee is pretty loose. Let's try it with a pipe. The tee is very loose. Okay, so take your handy dandy high quality, super accurate magnetic level, which everybody has of course, right? It's the first level I've ever owned that I trust implicitly. I've never trusted a level I've owned before. Do that. Right. But you pay for that trust. That little eight inch level was 50, 
like 53, 54 dollars. Hmm. I want to hit this from the other side since I'm right handed. And my body's more comfortable hanging off a ladder that direction. Sometimes it gets tough. things much easier so I needed to check the level to make sure 
that wherever I put it, that I didn't have to move this side up. But this side can come down and make it level. I can pivot back and forth. And you can see this pivoting here. And I gotta check my front and back level. So, I'll get another screw ready on the drill. be able to do it'd be nice to put one across from this screw uh, and then it'll still pivot front to back but not side to side so then it makes the leveling easy if I put one here where it's easy for me to get to uh, it's it a little harder to level it in both directions with the next screws up on the ladder anyway That is level. Plum, I should say. So this I just moved on me because I'm pushing on it. Push up high, where's my mark? All right, that's moving again, but I'm not through the first layer, so I'm all right. Put the magnet on there, and I can probably pull it back. 